Many business applications use the Spring framework and related JE standards to manage application services like web connectivity, persistence, security, and other common concerns. One of the key features of Spring is the concept of beans to define high-level injectable services. To help with the interpretation of call trees, JProfiler has special support for these classes that I'm going to show in the screencast. We'll be profiling a Spring demo application called Spring Music that lets you manage music albums in a web interface. In the IDE, the JProfiler plugin adds a toolbar button to profile the currently selected run configuration. This action is also available in the Run context menus. Package filters are set up automatically based on the source files in the current IDE project. All method calls from classes in this package will be profiled. The call tree gives us an overview of what's happening in the application, so let's start CPU recording and open the web application in the browser. This is a single-page UI built with the Angular JavaScript framework and provides the usual CRUD operations. Let's edit the release year of the first album. In JProfiler, the call tree shows the REST calls for managing albums under the Albums URL. Two different types of fetch calls have invoked that URL from the browser. The albums have been listed twice, and the update of the first album occurred after clicking the OK button in the dialog. We can see that the UI is built with Angular from the last frame of the JavaScript stack trace. The entire stack trace in the browser is displayed when clicking on Show More. JavaScript tracking is automatically available when you install the JProfiler Origin Tracker extension in Chrome. The entire handling of the album update is contained in this node. Let's expand it. The bean icon indicates that JProfiler has detected that this class is a Spring component. Generally, if you wonder what a node icon means, use the legend dialog that is available from the toolbar. The legend also explains the colors in the time bars and the abbreviations on the node text. All matching entries are shown in bold, and when you click on one of them, the explanation is shown at the bottom of the dialog. The detection of spring beans relies on class annotations, and all annotations derived from the spring component annotation are recognized by JProfiler. The legend dialog is non-modal and always on top, so we can keep it open and select another node to check its icon. The legend is telling us that this is an unprofiled method node. The package of the class is not in the profiled classes but the method is called directly from a profile class, so it's shown in the call tree. Any further calls to unprofiled classes are contained in the inherent time of that node until a profile class is called again. Here, this is the JPA album repository class. All its time is in the self time. Not because the method actually performs the entire work, but because all further method calls are in unprofiled classes of the Spring framework. A suitable call tree filter configuration in JProfiler is very important to be able to interpret the data. If the Spring Framework classes were profiled, the call tree would be huge and it would be difficult to find your own classes. Basically, JProfiler aggregates timing data along boundaries of profiled classes. Because data aggregation is so important for being able to analyze applications running in frameworks, there are even more ways to aggregate call tree data that are especially important for large applications. The aggregation level selector in the top right corner of the call tree view offers higher level views where nodes in the tree represent classes, packages, or JEE spring components. If we select the classes aggregation level, all method calls within a single class will be aggregated into a single node. This can make a huge difference, for example, for recursive invocations. The JEE Spring aggregation level is like the classes aggregation level, only that it restricts nodes to JEE and Spring components. Now we only see the URL and JavaScript splitting nodes, as well as the JEE components and Spring components. 
This gives you a good overview which services or components consume most of the time. An example of a JEE component is the album EJB that is updated by the album controller. When analyzing a call tree, you can start with the JE spring aggregation level. Select the node of interest and change to the method aggregation level to see more detail. JProfiler selects a corresponding node after changing the aggregation level. In the same way, the nearest JE or spring component node will be selected when you switch back to the JE spring aggregation level. Equally important to the call tree view when analyzing performance problems is the hotspots view. Here, the top level nodes are JEE and spring components, and the back traces show how they have been invoked. The most important metric for a hotspot is the self time, which depends on the set of profile classes. The JPA album repository is the bean that takes most of the time but it includes the entire mechanics of the Spring Data Framework. In this demo application, there is a limited number of service layers, and the call stacks of profile classes are quite shallow. In a real enterprise application, this will be different, and the depth of the call tree and backtraces will be reduced dramatically compared to the method aggregation level. In general, the detection of JEE spring components in the JEE spring aggregation level provide a helpful perspective for understanding performance characteristics by highlighting the higher level services of your application and aggregating measurements along their boundaries.